MLB All-Star Game will return to Dodger Stadium. It's been 42 years, but the wait is finally over and the excitement, well, it is building. Hello and thanks for joining us today on Playing the Field. I'm your host, Maria Soreo, and we are back here in the Centerfield Plaza at Dodger Stadium, kind of my home away from home. And so much exciting information to bring you about the 2022 MLB All-Star Game. It will be right here at Chavez Ravine. And really, there will be all sorts of activities for the entire weekend. Now, the All-Star Game is July the 19th, which is a Tuesday. Of course, the Home Run Derby will be on Monday the 18th. From the beach all the way to downtown Los Angeles, there will be many events going on around the All-Star Game. Yesterday, we had a press conference with all of the exciting news, so here's more. On behalf of Major League Baseball, I'm excited to be here today to announce the schedule for 2022 All-Star Week in LA. Um, first, I wanna thank the Dodgers organization, Stan, Dodgers players and Dodgers fans, um, and Mr. Mayor and Councilman, members of the, the city of Los Angeles for all the work that's gone into getting us to this point. It's been a long road. We were hoping to be here two years ago, and uh, uh, I think the, but the, the wait will be worth it because we put a lot of extra time into the event. And I think what you'll see with the schedule um, is a really great program for All-Star Week in July. One of the things that we try to do with All-Star is create a special program for each city that really highlights the unique and special elements of that town, as well as creating an environment where all fans can participate. Um, so I wanna highlight some of those events that are on the schedule for this year. First, and, and probably most exemplary of those two points, is a new event called um, the MLB All-Star Oceanfront at Santa Monica Pier. That event will be a free event um, on the beach Friday through Sunday of uh, All-Star Weekend. Um, it will have a number of themed events um, geared towards casual play and reaching a new audience down in sunny, at, at, at the oceanfront in front of the sun um, in, in the middle of July in Los Angeles. So we're really excited about that event. Um, following on that event is Play Ball Park, which will be held in downtown LA at LA Live. Um, and that'll be a ticketed event. Tickets go on sale today. Um, and is a, in, in the convention center style format where fans will be able to in, uh, play in a bunch of exhibits and have outdoor events as well. Um, on Saturday, we're moving the F Sirius XM All-Star Futures game uh, and the All-Star Celebrity Softball game to Saturday here at Dodger Stadium. Um, to create extra room on the schedule. So we encourage all fans to come out to that event. Um, we're anticipating having a concert after that event as well on, su on Saturday. Um, on Sunday, um, for the second year in a row, we're hosting the MLB Draft uh, at All-Star Week, and that'll be held uh, at, again at LA Live outside the Xbox Theater. Um, it'll be an opportunity for you to get introduced to the next uh, round of MLB stars that hopefully will, hopefully will be here one day um, in an All-Star game. Um, and then, obviously, we have the, the main event, the Home Run Derby on Monday, um, and, and the All-Star Game on Tuesday, where you'll see some of the greatest stars in baseball converge on, on Los Angeles to tell the story of, of our great game. Um, lastly, I want to close and just mention that aside from all those events, we, find, we think it's very important to spend time on enriching the community when we're here and to give back. And so you'll see over the coming weeks a number of different charitable events, field refurbishments, and other activations around the city of Los Angeles to give back and, and reward the city for all that they've invested in this event. Um, and we're, we're hopeful that you'll, you'll see a, a lot of those activations bring the community element of baseball to life. Um, lastly, you'll see at, at the game on Tuesday and throughout All-Star Week, we'll be honoring the legacy of Jackie Robinson. Uh, this year is the 75th anniversary of Jackie's historic um, moment in baseball, being uh, the first African-American player on the baseball field. And we're excited to uh, recognize that throughout All-Star Week, and you'll see a whole host of activations around that as well. So a lot to look forward to. We're really excited for All-Star Week in July, uh, and, and we look forward to being back out here um, later this summer. As you know, here in LA, we are the city of big events and big parties, and that's what we're gonna have in July. Five days of a big, big event and a big, big party. So as we get ready to come and all watch what is already the most heavily attended sports venue in the world in what is already the most beautiful place ever built to play or watch the game of baseball we're finally going to have our game and it's 42 years since our last game now there's something serendipitous about that everyone knows how that number resonates in our sport not just 
in baseball, but all sports around the country. 42 is a special number. And so when I was asked about this 10 years ago, I wish I could have had the foresight to tell them, well, wait till it's 42 years. But who am I kidding? Two years ago, I thought the drought was going to end at 40. But we're happy that it's finally here. It has been a long time coming. But it is going to be worth the wait. And I can't wait to see everyone here. Yeah, this is really special. Obviously, I grew up in Southern California. And this will be the first All-Star game I ever see here. So um, we're excited. We've got a bunch of guys who should be representing the Dodgers in the game. And I know we're going to put on a great show. All the fans out there, I'm going to be enjoying this for the first time. Uh, just like this is such a great place to play, and I think everybody knows that. Everybody, all the road teams that come in and get to play here, they say what a great place Dodger Stadium is. And, um, we're excited to share it. It'll be awesome. And in our new segment, Who is Your Inspiration? I caught up with former Dodger and current shortstop for the Cincinnati Reds, Kyle Farmer, and we found out who his inspiration is. You know, it's kind of funny. My dad played baseball in, uh, his whole entire life, played at Ole Miss, pitched at Ole Miss. Then he was in AAA with the Braves uh, for a long time. Uh, then he had me, and so we had to, he had to retire from baseball. Never made it to the big leagues, but he was close. Um, so I would say him, uh, you know, he's had a major impact on my life with baseball, and he's been so selfless in the way he's taught me the game. And, and I also have to give it to my cousin. Uh, Joseph Jex. He's a lot, he's about four years older than me and, and he was uh, kind of the one that kind of showed me the ropes and showed me how to play the game. Uh, one of my best friends, he's my cousin, but uh, so those two and um, also my grandmother, she uh, she babysat me when my parents both worked and she was out in the front yard throwing me pine cones and I was sitting with, with a football bat. So I had a lot of impact on my life when I was younger about baseball. What was your first experience, like you can just think back to your very first game as a pro player, what was that like? Yeah, it was in Ogden, Utah, the rookie ball for the Dodgers, and it was my first time ever catching. And uh, I walked in the locker room, Damon Berryhill was our manager, and uh, never caught before. And I showed up, I'm hitting third, catching, and I walked in the lot in, the lot, in, the, uh, in his office and said, hey, I've never done this before. And he's like, I just want to see what you got. And so through five innings, I was catching, and uh, I had the shin guards on backwards. And so, um, that was my first experience of professional baseball, and uh, it's one I won't forget. Did you ever play any other sports growing up? Yeah. Which ones? I played, I played all sports. I played hockey, basketball, football, obviously baseball. Um, did karate on a jump rope team. Um, but I quit basketball in fourth grade when I scored the wrong goal, and uh, it was church <laughs> league, and uh, I just knew that wasn't for me. But in high school, I just played football and baseball. Um, played football in my senior year of high school, and. Uh, lost in the state championship and I played quarterback. It was, it was a lot of fun. You know, like, I talk to a lot of kids and they'll say that, you know, like some sports actually help them with other ones. What do you think helped you with baseball playing other sports? Like, um, I think football did. I think uh, it made me more competitive, uh, made me more, like, made me tougher. Um, really it helped me respect uh, my teammates and, and really taught me how to play with the team and work with the team in situations like that. And, my uh, Georgia baseball coach, David Perno, only he really liked his shortstops to have played football because it makes them mentally tough and, and really tough. So um, football definitely helped me out with baseball. And then lastly, what message would you give to kids that are you know, looking at you and thinking, you know, someday I want to be like that, I want to be a big leaguer? Um, I would say play as many sports as you can. Um, enjoy playing the sports. And if you don't enjoy it, then uh, it's probably not for you. Um, also work hard. Um, never give up and don't, and don't let anybody tell you that you can't do anything because uh, I've been told that a lot in my life and uh, I like proving people wrong. So um, always, you know, and be fun to watch. Someone always told me that the best, the best advice you can ever have is, is be fun to watch and that's probably the biggest thing. Thanks Kyle, it's always fun to see you and catch up. All right, now the All-Star Game. Everybody votes. In fact, voting is going to begin very soon at MLB.com. So who are your picks for the All-Star Game? You can hit me up on Twitter and Instagram. Now on Twitter, it's at Maria Sports. And on Instagram, it's at Maria Soreo Sports. Let me know who you think is going to the big game. Well, it's always a very special day in Major League Baseball when every player wears number 42. Of course, that's Jackie Robinson Day. This year, all of the Dodger players came right out here to the center field plaza to the Jackie Robinson statue as they reflected on this very special day.
And moving on to NFL football, well, the NFL draft is in the books. And of course, it has changed a lot over the years. Now, this year they held the draft in glitzy Las Vegas, but the Rams and the Chargers, well, they stayed back in Los Angeles to get some work done. The Chargers did have a pick in the first round, and they went with guard Zion Johnson. Now, he's going to be great protection for third-year quarterback Justin Herbert. Now, as far as the Rams, they had a pick at the end of the third round. They went with an offensive lineman as well, selecting Logan Bruss from Wisconsin. Now, the Rams also traded one of their picks to Cleveland to get back corner Troy Hill. All right, now I had a chance to catch up with Rams general manager Les Snead and their head coach Sean McVay, and I asked them to get in the Wayback Machine and tell me their very first memories of the NFL draft. Here's what they had to say. Go ahead, Les. You know what, it's only, you know what the thing that came to my mind? Longer than me. Well, my, well it, I, I would go with this and I'll, I'll instead of the, the first the first draft, I mean, that, the first draft was when we had, I think, the two pick, and we ended up trading probably with Sean and the Redskins. They moved into that pick to take RG3. But w I remember working with Sean. I do remember our first draft together. Sean's moved out here, and we're doing a lot of our draft meetings at the Four Seasons because you didn't have a home yet. And and so I would meet you there uh, in the evenings, and, and that's when we discussed, you know, strategies and draft philosophies and players and things like that yeah i would say uh one of the you know most memorable experiences was going on the road with les and zach taylor and matt lafleur shane waldron a handful of guys and kind of went on the workout circuit we worked out evan ingram and gerald everett and cooper cup and zay jones and you know there was a handful of guys that uh you know we had a lot of fun with ended up with two of those guys that were big parts of it and Obviously, we know, uh, you know, how the Cooper things worked out, but that was uh, that was a great experience being able to go through that, um, you know, and identify that was kind of one of the first times I'd gone through a, a situation like that where you worked out a handful of guys in a short amount of time. And, you know, Taiwan Taylor was a part of that as well. There was a there was a lot of guys we worked out that uh, it was fun to be able to kind of see those see those guys work up close and personal. Thanks. Now the Rams held their draft at a posh Hollywood Hills home. Remember last year it was in Malibu, while the Chargers held a rally at SoFi Stadium. And finally, the streets of Long Beach were hot, hot, hot when the Long Beach Grand Prix rolled into town this year. Now, I had a chance to sit down with many of the drivers who talked about the race and how they're doing this year in the IndyCar Series. We are now joined by Graham Rahal at the Long Beach Grand Prix. Graham, we're back in Long Beach. Everything seems sort of normal now. Yeah, it's ni it's nice. It's good to be back. And, you know, I felt just personally like we could have been back a little while ago to this sort of stage. And in most places we were. But in here in California, it's good to see everybody back. You know, it's good to see everybody without masks. Right. Uh, just, just because I think you miss so much of that interaction. You miss so much of... You know, see, under, seeing people, seeing people's emotions, understanding the way that they're feeling by the looks on their face, all of those things disappeared for two, two years. But uh, it's great to have everybody at, back here at Long Beach. Gonna, I'm sure going to be a huge crowd, you know, high expectations for this weekend. And for us as a team in the courts machine, we're going to try to go out there and do the best that we can. How is the season starting for you so far? Well, it's been frustrating, I think. You know, St. Pete was good. I, okay, good, you know, but we, we want to win. I mean, you know me, I've been around this a long time, and I'm getting a little frustrated, I think, that naturally as everybody is. We've been so close so many times, I can't seem to get over the hurdle. It's been almost five years now since we won, which is shocking to think that it's gone by that quick. But needless to say that, you know, we, we've got to get a win here. We've got to get some momentum. Texas was a bust for us uh, in many different phases, ultimately resulting in a DNF. Um, you know, but uh, hopefully we can get back on track here in Long Beach. For you as a driver, what do you work on specifically to try to get over that hurdle? Now the multi-million dollar question. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think most of it's mental, um, you know, just keeping everybody locked in. You know, as a driver, it's easy to keep pushing every weekend. But from a mechanic standpoint, engineer standpoint, frustration can come easy. Um, you know, those guys bust their tails. And if they're not getting the results that they feel like we should, it does become naturally very hard. Um, you know, but the mental side of it is, is critical. Just keep everybody pushing along, keep everybody positive here. 
you know, thinking about ultimately where we want to be and, and reminding them of what the goal is and, uh, and, and, and working hard to achieve it. You've got two new teammates now on your team. What's that been like for you? Yeah, I mean, it's good to, to have two good guys. Um, obviously, Jack's uh, an experienced guy now in the sport, you know, but uh, Christian's young punk. Uh, he's, he's been good. Uh, he, he Actually, I've been very, very pleased. Um, he's very interested in learning and listening. Um, you know, he's ultimately, I think, going to have a lot of success and a great career here. You know, but uh, he's very good at, at just understanding or, or asking, you know, if he needs help and stuff. And a lot of young guys aren't necessarily that way. They think they've got it all figured out from the moment they step step foot in here. So uh, it's it's good to uh, to certainly have him around. And, you know, both those guys are much younger than me. Um, You're sort of the veteran guy here. I'm the old guy now. Uh, but it's good because it helps push us push the team forward and gives the team some some – a good solid future as well um, so that's the goal we are here with Jack Harvey Jack I have to ask you favorite NFL football team uh, Indianapolis Colts easy easy peasy <laughs> when you live in Indy you got to cheer for the horseshoe right when did you become involved with loving football uh, so I moved to Indy probably early 2014 uh, I would say that off like the next season that followed that uh, was when I really kind of I started playing fantasy football and I started oh going to Colts God. games okay. and all them things and I was hooked and um, to be honest like watching the NFL or American football has some similarities between soccer and rugby which is obviously what I'm used to in the UK right. uh, so I could kind of pick up a little bit of what's going on and then I feel like the NFL or honestly American football itself is a sport that when you know a little bit it kind of leads you into wanting to know a lot, a lot. Yes. Uh, so yeah that's probably my number one okay. sport that I've adopted since I've been here. Do you think that you would be good at football? If so, what position? Uh, well, I like to think so. Uh, probably, probably the one that's trying to take the least tackles and hits. Probably the kicker. I'd probably be the kicker, <laughs> sure. I like to, in my mind, I like to think that maybe I would have been okay at running back, but uh, in reality, probably not. Well, welcome to to the new team this year. How, tell me, how, tell us how it's been going. Uh, I, well, it's been okay. Uh, you know, I've really, really enjoyed getting to know everybody at RLL. Uh, we have a huge amount of encouraging things that are happening. There's a lot of really positive things that are happening right now. The direction the team is going, uh, I think, is awesome. Uh, the only thing we haven't had yet as a team is like that kind of that end result that you can kind of rest your hat on. It's coming. So, and, it, and, it, and that's the thing. And that's why the feeling right now is, you know, you have to acknowledge what hasn't happened yet. Uh, you know, in the same in the same breath, like there are a lot of new things within the team this year. You know, two new drivers, right. uh, you know, new engineers and stuff like that. Um, but those things take a little time. But obviously, we live in a world where you want success and you want it right now. Want it right now, which yeah. uh, you know, we're all competitive people. So I mean, it's kind of the the nature of what we what we do. But I'm really encouraged about where we're heading. So fair to say, the first two races, you know, for all three of us, haven't gone how we hoped. Uh, you know, that being said, we're not going to dwell on that. We're just going to worry about how we do get a good result this weekend in Long Beach. You've been here before. What's the biggest challenge here in this track? I think like any street circuit, it's really being able to push the car to the limit without having any incidences, really. Right. Uh, I think the other thing that's interesting specifically here is I think the track can start out kind of dirty. And then by the time you get to qualifying, it's rubbered in quite a lot. But obviously, that changes the balance of the car. and you know, things like that. So I think for us as a team, staying open-minded, but also trying to think like slightly forward as to what we anticipate might happen is going to be important. But then there's a fine line, right? Because you can't anticipate everything. And, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. So um, I think it's just trying to make the best decision in the right time. Uh, but the track itself's awesome. I mean, for anyone who wants to come and watch, I think turn one's cool obviously the fountains one of the most famous complexes but also you know if you get a grandstand seat in that last section through turn nine turn ten and turn eleven always is pretty cool too so i think you see it's, it's totally fair to say you know this is one of the favorite races of the fans the drivers the teams the sponsors anybody really connected with the series so honestly we're just happy to be back drivers in general say you're the craziest driver out there well, I think that means off the track, because off the track I do enjoy, um, you know, living life, because it's important. I think we're here for a good time, not a long time, uh, especially in a dangerous game that we play, right? And I think, honestly, as well, what do people do when they win the Super Bowl? They're going to celebrate. We see Tom Brady throwing trophies to different boats. I, I don't see I don't really see many of our IndyCar winners like celebrating or champions. So, like, guess what? If you win a race. 
like Scott McLaughlin did after St. Petersburg. We went out and enjoyed the city of St. Petersburg, had a great time, probably met some new people that might not know about IndyCar because you got to get out and enjoy life with the people. And that's what I, that's what I believe in. So when are you going to do Dancing with the Stars? You know some of your alum have been very successful doing that. I would do it. I just probably have to win some more IndyCar, or some IndyCar <laughs> races first. I don't think you do, actually. I don't know. Just at least, like, say, oh, IndyCar race winner, now he's a dancer guy. So we'll see. I would love to do it. I would definitely, if they call my number, I'll answer. This is, okay, this is a, a very good thing. Now tell me, what do you like the most about driving this track here in Long Beach? Well, I think the history behind it is is such an incredible, um, you know, meaning to us as drivers. I mean, my father raced here in Formula One. Uh, you know, I won in one here in Indy Lights. Like, I love, it, it, you know, it was my my only Indy Lights win, and my you know my parents were there in Victory Lane, so really really cool. Um, and 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 it's just awesome. Like, there are so many people that that come out to this race. Such a great crowd every year. Um, and I just, you know, I think we have to be proud of that because it's such a great event, and, and we love, we know that if you win here, it means a lot. Yeah. What do you do in the off season to keep busy? I know you test a lot, but what do you do so to, to relax? Well, realistically, the testing has been limited now, so it's it, there's a lot of training for us. The, the cars are so physically hard to drive right now that we have to train at a very, very high level. So as soon as the season ends, I mean, we're training twice a day all through, all through the winter. So a lot of physical training, but also, I mean. I don't know, just do whatever. I, I try to race different things. I try to drive anything I can during the off season, um, but also like relax, like take some time off. Like I've been home four hours in the last two oh weeks. God. Like it's something where you just kind of want to hang out for a little bit and like figure out what your couch feels like again. Did you ever tr play any different sports? I played lacrosse, basketball, football, soccer, and I was bad at all of them. So not just a few, but all of them. Yeah, right? I tried. I was like, because I wanted to, like, I, I wanted to be with the cool kids. I was like, if I was playing football, then all right, we're playing football. But turns out I was only good at driving, so that uh, it worked out okay. Well, growing up in Indianapolis, I mean, you have a lot of sports to pick from, but that track is so special there. Just, just tell me about that growing up and driving at that track. Well, I mean, it's the greatest place in the world. It's uh, Indy 500 is better than Christmas, better than your birthday, all put together. Um, and it's just so special. And I think now, obviously, it's been two years where we haven't seen maximum specialty there yet. And then now we're fully back. So, like, it's it's going to be really cool. And honestly, I feel for a lot of these young drivers, like the rookie drivers, like even Scott McLaughlin, who doesn't really seem like a rookie now, but he hasn't experienced the full Indy 500 yet. So it's going to be really cool. I love seeing joy in other people's faces, right? Because, like, it's something that I've, I've enjoyed since I was a child. And so I know how cool it is. And every year it doesn't get any worse. So... Um, I'm, I'm excited for that whole program, and I think right now our series is so strong. We got so many really good drivers. Uh, just to be, you know, to get to say that you're going to be in the same Indy 500 as Jimmy Johnson is like a wild thing as well. So um, it's pretty cool. What's it been like getting to know him? I like Jimmy a lot. He's a great guy. Loves to have a great time. He's a successful, probably one of the most successful dudes that walks the planet in motorsport. Um, but he's also just cool, and uh, you know, he's. Nice enough to trade me a helmet last year, which I thought was really respectful. So I got one in the house, um, and yeah, he just—he's—he's—he's he's, he's a good dude, who is accepting a challenge that is very difficult that not many in his sport have ever tried to do, and he is not disrespecting it at all, which is really cool. Did you ever want to try NASCAR? I love NASCAR. Yeah, I definitely want to do the Daytona 500 someday. I mean, I've done an Xfinity race, I've done two truck races, so like. I'm gonna to try to do another truck race this year, so I'm getting, I'm dabbling my feet in there a little bit, but I would love to do more NASCAR. This is your very first time at the Long Beach Grand Prix driving here for Ray Hall, Letterman, Lanigan. What are your first impressions just being here? First of all, it's too hot. It, it's too hot for me. I'm, I'm Scandinavian, so I'm used to, uh, to all the cold weather. Of course. Um, but I, I think it's just a great atmosphere. It's, it's, like, um, it's like going to an event I feel like a spectator when I'm walking around, you know, I, I see so many people and, and it, it's like going to a festival, um, but I think going out there will be special for, for the first practice and, and for me to, you know, just get around and see where I'm at. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm hoping to beat my teammates because they, they've raced here plenty of times. Um, so, you know, if, if, I can, if I can be on their pace straight away, I'll be fairly happy because I'll be set for the weekend. You know, starting, starting further behind them, in the first session will put me on the back foot um you know it's it's learning and um i'll be i'll be ready you know what this has been super new for you in indycar what has this been like and how is it different from racing in europe 
racing in Europe is um, it racing is racing but at the same time so much stuff goes on behind the scenes that we don't really notice right. and um, I, I, I just spoke to, uh, to someone else over there saying what I'm gonna say now is that European racing is too political if you ask me personally I, I, I come over here and I feel like I'm back in go-karts wow. where you put the car on the ground and you race and, and the guy that finishes the race first wins um, you know that that's how racing should be and you know it's it's how you, you, you reach that. Obviously, in, in Europe, they do race the same way, but in different ways. Um, and I, I just like it here because it, it's like being back in the roots that I grew up with, you know, the, the sport that I fell in love with. Well, it's quite rare to enter the IndyCar series at age 42, but that's exactly what driver Jimmy Johnson did. Now, Johnson is currently driving for Chip Ganassi Racing, but we all know him for the champion that he was in the NASCAR series, but things have been a little bit different in IndyCar. He's really gone from champion to challenger, and here's what he had to say. Season two in IndyCar, why did you want to drive IndyCar after such a successful NASCAR career? You know, I had um, a chance to drive a Formula One car in 2018. I did a car swap with Alonzo. And the experience was so cool. I'm like, wow, I, did, I need to try another open wheel car. I want more of this in my life. And then worked really hard, but COVID kind of got in the way and, and some opp an opportunity kind of passed. And then Chip Ganassi was like, hey man, come just come drive it and see if you like it. So I drove, I guess in 21, um, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, in 2020, I drove, drove um, at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on the road course. And I felt like a kid. I mean, it was just such a cool experience. The cars are so high performing. Um, that I, I just I wanted to pursue it and Chip was kind enough and had an open mind to say hey if we can put the deal together let's go and here I am now in my second year. The first year obviously lots of challenges you, is there one thing you can say that's what I learned the most last year? It's hard to say one because there is so much different and I, I was naive enough to think that heck it has four tires and it's a car it's going to be the same but it has been, been Very such, different. such a different experience. Um, I would say the, the aggressiveness required to drive one of these cars. Um, the regulars make it look so effortless and, and easy. And, and inside the car, it's a violent, aggressive environment that um, I would never drive a NASCAR vehicle with that kind of fury. There's right? no bumping in this, you know. No, and there's none of that. But I mean, you know, in NASCAR, you have the bumping, so there's aggression there. But literally, the way the car talks to you and what you feel in the car, NASCAR vehicles like driving a Cadillac right. and these Indy cars are so violent and so high performing that um, it, it's just mentally a different place. It must be exhilarating doing better of course this year feeling more comfortable here. Yeah I'm, it's really nice I knew where to even park today like last year I had no idea where to park where to go uh, so you know the things that create stress that list is getting shorter and I can just focus more on driving. Especially when you think about Long Beach Grand Prix because you did not race this track obviously at NASCAR this is brand new the last couple years for you. Yeah it's a new one I did grow up a few hours south of here in yeah. San Diego and hung on the fence as a fan and dreamed of being here so it's really nice to be here. And after talking to many of the drivers about what it was like to have Jimmy Johnson entering IndyCar they said that he is really a good fit for the series that he's excited to learn so even though it may have humbled him a little bit, I give him a lot of credit for going out there and learning a brand new series at age 42. That will do it for today's show. Remember, you can watch Playing the Field 24-7 at playingthefieldtv.com. I'm Maria Soreo from Dodger Stadium. We'll see you next time.